The objective for today is to dry motor the JT8D engine on this 737-200. To do so, we need both pneumatic power because we're not using the APU, so we have our ground puffer unit, our portable puffer right there. And we have ground power here as well. Um, I have hooked up the batteries for DC power. And here, this is my Elcon connector. So we have two 24 volt batteries in here. So that is connected and then our ground power cart will supply us with AC power. So we'll go ahead and get that going. Before we start the huffer to apply pneumatic air to our system, we need to put on some hearing protection because this is extremely loud. I'll probably have to cut the video once this fires up uh, because it'll be louder than the audio is capable of handling. But before I do, I'll show you the process. We're going to start up this Detroit diesel, which powers this unit. Uh, give it a couple minutes to get some heat into it. Rev it up to 2300 RPMs and then switch our load switch over to Jet Start and that'll apply roughly 40 psi through the line to our uh, connection port on our right air cycle machine. So we're connected right now. This is the air cycle machine bay small hatch right in the front, we can connect this here. Like I said, the other source of pneumatic air is the APU, or auxiliary power unit, in the tail of the aircraft, but we are not using that today. So this is the alternative to start our engines, or in this case, dry motor, which is rotating the engines without adding any fuel. So let me get this hearing protection off, we'll fire up our hover, and then go up to the cockpit to continue on with the so here we are in the cockpit of the 737. Uh, first thing we need to do is apply power, both AC and DC, to the aircraft. So to apply AC, we look down here at our ground power available light, which indicates that we do have our ground cart out there, applying AC power to the plug. So if I turn the switch on, I now have AC power. Now, turn on DC, I have to turn my DC battery switch on. And then I'll go ahead and set this up to ground power. Okay, so here we are. This is a JRH, or Jet Run-Up Handbook. This gives you all the steps for individual procedures. In this case, we're looking at our engine motoring section. Okay, so it tells you what to do. Make sure the wheels are chalked, um, everything's clear, and make sure all your circuit breakers and switches are in the right position. We're going to skip ahead to the dry motor section since that's what we're interested in. So, first things first, make sure we have at least 26 psi of pneumatic air. Good luck up here. We are, whoops, zoomed in a little bit. There we are. 40 psi, so well above the minimum. Uh, circuit breakers, we want to make sure that those are cold. So, we look back here to our panel. This, these are our four ignition circuit breakers. I have all of them pulled. Good there. Okay, we're not going to worry about hydraulic pumps. We're not going to turn those on. Um, anything else? Tank clearance. Okay, so uh, basically what we need to keep an eye on here, a couple of main things. If we're going to motor engine two, we need to make sure we have enough oil available. So. I think 0.8 gallons is the minimum there, so we're well above that. Hydraulic quantity, if we're going to operate our hydraulic pumps, needs to be above 2.25. We're sitting right at about two, but we're not gonna operate anything, so we'll let that fly for now. Um, we need to have our start valve pushed in. 
for this operation, so I'll go ahead and close that circuit breaker. And if we want to motor engine two, then we need to have the bleed valve open for engine two, or to allow pneumatic air to engine two. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're good there. Okay, now all that's left will be to arm the start valve, and then flip our start switch to the ground position, or hold it in the ground position, or ground start position, for the duration we want to motor the engine. In this case, we have a time limit. We can only motor it for one minute max at a time, with about four minutes resting period to allow everything to cool down and rest between start attempts. Now again, we're not trying to start the engine up, just motor the engine over uh, without the addition of fuel. So uh, just to ensure that, our throttles are back in the idle position and our fuel is in cutoff, and our boost pumps over here are off. Okay. So, uh, we'll go ahead and set our timer up and motor this for one minute. Uh, one thing we forgot to do was a fire test before we do this operation. So we can quickly do that by flipping our test switch over to fire, verifying the bell goes off and all lights go off, and then we can hit the bell cutout. Okay, and then same with overheat. If I push the test switch to the left, I get the overheat and master caution light. So ready when you are. RPM on engine two. And we should see oil pressure building on engine two as well, and we do. So here's oil pressure engine two, and we're right at the bottom of the green arc, which is good. And our minute is up. You can see oil pressure dropping in one RPM dropping as well. All right, and that's all there is to it. Okay, now to repeat this process on engine one, there's a couple more steps we have to take. Uh, first of which is to close our bleed valve on engine two, open it on one, but since our pneumatic ground cart is connected on the right side of our system and we have an isolation valve in the middle, we need to make sure that that's open so that we're supplying air to both sides. And we are already, but just to show you uh, what it would be like if that was closed or how you could tell if we have air to both sides, we'll go ahead and close our isolation valve. And after a couple seconds, you see there. So we actually have two needles on our pneumatic pressure gauge here. And one is for the left side of the system which is from the isolation valve over this direction, and the other is from the right side. So we'll go ahead and open that back up. All right, same process. Again, our start valve is armed, and all we have to do, again, set our timer and hold it for one minute. There she goes. We should be able to see RPM start increasing here. See oil pressure climbing as well. It seems that this engine is not generating as much oil pressure as the other side, but and as we're only at 10% RPM, not too concerned.
All right, I just figured I'd show you how to disconnect the battery on the 737. It's extremely simple. Uh, like I said, we have this Elcon connector. Just grab the knob, push to the left, unscrews and pops apart, just like that. So at this point, there is no DC power being supplied anywhere to the aircraft. We're at no risk there. And we have already disconnected the ground power cart. So no AC power either. So we're safe to put this aircraft in storage.